fellow fellow words welcome back to fancine greg here and today after you hollywood is facing digital decay what do i mean by digital decay uh well we're going to get into it here in a minute with this article i found uh but everybody always says digital is awesome it's so much better than physical in every way um not necessarily not necessarily people i'm sorry to say that is it's just it's just not but i'm gonna bring up this article here right here from the hollywood reporter it says it's a silent fire decaying digital movie and tv show files are a hollywood crisis every time i see something like this it often makes me think of a clip i like to use here on my channel from a certain documentary about 80s horror what was that clip again there's a real dilemma right now in terms of what I've been calling the digital divides. Stuff was on VHS in the 80s, and if it didn't make the leap to DVD, then the odds are that much less that it's gonna make the leap to Blu-ray, and now the odds are even much less that somebody's gonna like sell that transfer streaming rights somewhere, and there is stuff that has vanished almost. It's film history. We talk about um, how the silent film era, how 75 or 80% of the films are all gone. We're like, oh, how can that happen? But we're letting it happen again. Oh yeah, that clip. Uh, I think that clip is vastly important. More and more I dig into this Hollywood stuff with digital and physical and everything like that as well. But this continues with industry pros sweat the possibility that many digital files will eventually become unusable. An archival tragedy reminiscent of the celluloid era. Which celluloid era, that's why it's called a silent fire. A fire took out a lot of the uh, old Hollywood films and stuff and everything that was mentioned in that clip. And uh, silent films were lost. They weren't really preserved because uh, they didn't realize what they had. So let's continue with this article. So it's by Gary Baum and Caroline Giardina, which I hope I said the name right, and I apologize if I didn't. Um, it starts off with saying, while David Zaslov and Bob Iger's tax optimization strategy of deleting films and TV shows from their streamers has triggered plenty of agita among uh, creators, the custodians of Hollywood's digital era have an even greater fear. Wholesale decay of feature and episodic files. Does anybody know what the freaking doing out there in Hollywood anymore? I swear, it's like it's like the dumbest place in the world. Uh, behind closed doors and NDAs, non-disclosable agreements, the fragility of archives is a perpetual topic A, with pros sweating the possibility that contemporary pop culture's master files might be true goners, destined to the same fate as so many vanished silent movies, among them Alfred Hitchcock's second feature, The Mountain Eagle, which we lost, and Ernest's Lumbic's Oscar-winning The Patriot. Uh, this is sad. I mean, it's truly depressing to hear that they're losing digital file files like they did. I mean, it, we are doomed to repeat history if we do not learn from our history, right? Uh, it says, it's underscored by initiatives such as Martin Scorsese's Film Foundation. The preservation of every art form is fundamental. The industry icon says on a video on the organization's website, for the business there are valuable studio assets to use. One example, the MGM library roughly costs roughly 4,000 film titles, including the James Bond franchise and 17 series uh, episodes, is worth an estimated 3.5. Four billion dollars to Amazon. Could you imagine if they digitized all this and shelved the film and lost the film and lost the digital thing? Holy, that that would be all. Oh, that would be horrible for James Bond fans and everything. But there's a misconception that digital files are safe forever. Exactly. I know I complain a lot about that. You will never own a digital file if you um, buy it. Well, digital files are not always safe. They can be corrupted, and you can, and they can decay, and you can lose them just like you could uh, a really shoddy disc, uh, like we've learned recently. Shout out to damn idealistic full crusader and uh, Michael from Retro Blasting that informed us about the Warner Brothers uh, DVDs from 2006 to 2009 that have disc rot and are falling apart and are ticking time bombs. Uh, I will put a link down to the damn full idealistic creators uh, video and uh, Retro Blasting video in the link below if you guys want to hear about the disc rot thing but th this can happen to digital files as well it continues with in fact files end up corrupted data isn't properly transferred hard drives fail formats change work simply vanish uh it's so great to know that a lot of the stuff that we're into may just disappear just may disappear because hollywood went to this digital thing and we've all went on digital online and uh you know digital made life so much easier didn't it guys it just made life so much easier to be digital <laughs> it says it's a silent fire says linda tedek ceo of digital bedrock an archiving server that works with studios and indie producers we find issues with every single show 
every single show or film that we tried to preserve. They find issue with every single one. So what exactly has gone missing? I can tell you stories, but I can't because of confidentiality. So who knows what we've actually lost? Who knows what TV shows, what movies we've lost? Who knows if some of those movies that are being canceled today uh, were actually lost digitally? And maybe that's why they were canceled. Who knows? Who knows? Because you'll never know. You'll never know because it's Hollywood because they don't like to take fault for anything. They like to blame you. Somehow they'll blame you for them losing digital files. That's how Hollywood plays the game. It says specialists across the space don't publicly speak out about specific lost work citing confidentiality issues. So only disquieting rumors circulate along the rare heart-stopping lore that breaches public consciousness. One example, one infamous example is I've heard this. I've I, I read it a little bit. I've heard this. It says in 1998, a Pixar employee accidentally typed a fatal command function, instructing the instructing the computer system to delete Toy Story 2, which was then almost complete. And they lost it. Yeah, they lost the movie com completely. It was gone. And if it wasn't, luckily, if it wasn't for a supervising technical director who'd been working from home because she just had a baby, had a two week old backup file, and the movie was safe. This is exactly why I I. I Look, I get digital. People love it. It's great to like digitize your collection. You know, you get a, a video, uh, a DVD, a Blu-ray, 4K. You digitize it. You back it up on your server. You keep the ISO file. That is vastly important. That is something that a lot of uh, uh, collectors do and everything. And it's something Hollywood should do. But the fact is that they're they're backing these up with digital and not and. It, you think they would have learned from that fire from all those uh, years ago when they lost all those silent, silent films and everything that, you know, maybe a hard physical copy is just as important as a digital copy. And the fact that they're just like allowing these digital files just to become corrupted or losing them and not even speaking about them. I mean, we don't know what we lost. We've honestly don't know what we've lost because of this, uh, because of this idiocracy, idiocracy. It's just, it's stupid. Um, the story continues with experts note that indie filmmakers operating under constrained financial circumstances are most at risk of seeing their art disappear, which is sad because I'm a huge supporter of independent filmmakers and to know that because they have so little budgets, they don't get to shoot on film. They shoot on digital because it's cheap. They're making these movies. They're, they're out there like guerrilla storm uh, fighting uh, filmmakers. And the fact that they could be losing their films quicker than a uh, big budget Hollywood is just truly depressing. Uh, and I feel for my indie filmmakers out there. I really, truly do. You have an entire er era of cinema that's in severe danger of being lost, contends screenwriter Larry Kazawaski, a, a board member of the National Film Preservation Foundation. His cohort on the board, historian Litter Leonard Moulton, you guys know Leonard Moulton, big movie critic, notes that this era could suffer from the same fate as fallen so many silent pictures and mid-century B movies, which is sad. And this is this isn't necessarily we're losing older stuff uh, that we know of. <laughs> this is some newer stuff that we may be losing. And I know some of you may out there be thinking, "Well, it's just new stuff. It sucks." And yes, new stuff does suck. Yeah, but it's this is very important because who knows what exactly is being lost? What new stuff? What maybe old stuff? is being lost at the same time. So uh, it's it's disheartening to hear this, truly is. Those films were not atten attended to at the time, not archived properly because they weren't the products of major studios, he said. So yeah, they just didn't care at that time, which is sad, truly sad. It says, in part, the indie filmmaker's digital crisis can be traced to inadequate storage safeguards. Insummerable thumb drives and hard drives are half forgotten, only to age and corrupt in closets, under beds, and on garage shelves. Wow. <laughs> but also it speaks to the fragile, e fragile ecosystem that ostensibly supports filmmakers over uh, overextended financiers to ephemeral distributors. They're worried about getting the project picked up and getting it out there. Proper preservation isn't thought about so much, observes Gregory Lukov, chief of the uh, Liberty of Congress National Audiovisual Conservation Center, Center excuse me, which now digitizes physical media. Uh, I hate that. I hate digitizes ages and physical media. It's just, oh, it just pisses me off. Uh, the sheer volume of now available digital material. See, this, that, that pisses me off because we've learned, we've learned recently that these streamers and the digital, for digital stuff, they like to maintain from like the late mid 90s to now. They don't like to digitize or play a lot of stuff from the 60s, the 50s, the 70s, the 80s. So we're losing that. We're losing that on streaming and digital. So who knows if they're even digitizing these and what they're doing with that. That just, that, oh, that grinds my gears. Uh, that, ooh, 
Ooh, <laughs> says the sheer volume of now available digital material can be overwhelming, both as practical matter stores cost a cure and a, co a tutorial one. But it's also been a, a boon, a boon. Uh, in the realm of nonfiction, unscripted materials, there's often a new wealth of outtakes and pre-interviews and with scripted features and episodic scenes that didn't make the theatrical cut or debut on TV, but provide an invaluable understanding of the work's development. Yeah, that's true, but they don't like to give us those special features anymore. They just like to put the movie on streaming and say, hey, there you go. So what's the point of saving all those behind the scenes, deleted scenes and uh, commentary and, and uh, bloopers? You don't give them to us anymore, Hollywood. You don't put them on the Blu-ray. The only people doing that are the boutique labels that actually care about physical media and this product. And what uh, I see, I see vinegar syndrome in their videos of telling me what, what what's an inner positive, what's a negative, how they preserve it, how they clean up vinegar, vinegar syndrome, how they preserve the special features and put it on the disc. And it sounds like here in Hollywood, the people that studios that they don't, they just don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. Yeah, they got all that behind the scenes footage, but did they give it to us on their studio releases? No. You're lucky to get the, the, the behind the scenes footage and stuff from the previous DVD releases when they first started getting into DVD when they cared about DVD. Now they don't give a shit. They all go to uh, streaming digital. So, yeah, what's good? Yeah, I bet that shit's getting lost left and right. When all we focus on the final product, exactly, they focus on the final product. We're missing the creative process, explains Mei Hong Do Hong. Sorry if I mispronounced it, director of UCLA Film and Television Archive. Uh, those in the preservation community say it's best in terms of time and expense when proper protocols are put into place up front. Too often it doesn't happen. You, we clearly see that. It's a different budget and a different model when it's done later on, says Lance Pro Podal, senior VP of the Iron Mountain Entertainment Service, uh, a data storage and restoration firm. To go back and make something searchable, retrievable, locatable is more expensive and time-consuming process than if you've done it out of the gate. And there's a loss of institutional memory because the people involved in making the work are often no longer around, just like I said. So in other words, why bother with this shit, especially when the guy's not alone around? Why say that stuff? Why just do that? Let's just digitize the movie and forget the rest. And then meanwhile, the digitization and the, the, the data is being de decrupted, uh, decaying and corrupted and being lost. And any filmmakers and B-movies are losing everything. Oh, my God. This is just. Uh, this is breaking me, guys. This is breaking me. It's, it's horrible. It's horrible. Um and continues with the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Science, SciTech Sci Council has spent years fretting about the, the issue. Yet Andy Maltz, who co-authored the council's reports on the topic and is now principal at the Con Consultatory General Intelligence, notes that the situation is not dire like it was uh, the industry really stepped up. Where? From what I've, everything I just read says it hasn't. What is this guy reading? <laughs> this includes the development and growing use of Academy color encoding system, which they can't get the color right on these movies right anymore anyways. Employed to comic, communicate color and other information. Yeah, right. Just, let's go back and look at what James Cameron just did with the uh, 4Ks of his new movies. Mm -hmm. And some of the color coded things that we've been getting on physical media from the studios. I mean, uh, the studios are putting out garbage lately. Tr truly, truly. Boutique labels are where it's at. Boutique labels are where you get it, and they would do much better work. I'm serious. They really do. Paramount Senior VP. Yeah, Paramount. Paramount, talk about uh, physical media releases. Yeah, they give us great – they give us a lot of their uh, their selection on uh, 4K and stuff, but it, they're, they're hit and miss. Uh, uh, what's that? Uh, oh, my God. I just uh, – the planes, trains, and automobiles. Uh, the, uh, the, devil, the baby one, the devil. I can't think of it. Uh, uh, um, Rosemary's Baby looked like shit. And then other movies look great. It's just, it's, it's, it's beyond me. Uh, Huli's SciTech Council's Preservation Initiative emphasizes that the best practice for preserving a film that was shot digitally is to have a copy of that final film in the best possible resolution in the wide, widest color gamut. So if you have the most original materials associated with that film, she adds, if you are moving your files to an infrastructure of sort, whether that's a data center or a set of clouds, people are thinking about storage policies like keeping multiple copies, which is true. You should always, like, I know with uh, my good friend, Tom Seymour, who just did his documentary, American Expendables, um, 
I know he had to upload a digital file to MVD and everything and like that. He just talked about it in his video. I'll put a link to his video too down below so you guys can go check that out. Uh, he had to upload it to them. It had to be in multiple formats, uh, you know, big digital file. And it sucks to know because he's an independent filmmaker that uh, these other studios and stuff, the independent filmmakers are losing losing their digital files and everything. I mean, Grant, yeah, they're talking about like, no, 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 it's not a problem. Paramount said it's not a problem, guys. Not a problem. But everything I just read before said it was a big problem. So who are you going to believe on this? But it, it sucks that you see indie filmmakers and film in general be digital, be lost. And I know this is, I know this, I keep saying this, I know this is new stuff that they're talking about, but truly what old stuff have we lost that they've digitized? Truly think about that because we know where streaming digital lies. They don't like to go old school. They like to go new school because it plays more on streaming because it plays to the younger people. So digitizing all that stuff, are they taking care of the film elements? Are they taking care of the film? Are they taking care of the digital file? Because they're clearly not taking care of the new digital stuff. So th this does not leave me with a good feeling as somebody who loves movies and entertainment. Um, so it continues with, there are also people that choose to store things offline like LTOs, referring to a tape-based format that's been utilized for decades, good old-fashioned and time-tested. Film also remains in use. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Maltz warns that with the nature of digital, preservation efforts can't stop. The data that you are protecting needs constant migration. You really can never take your eye off the digital ball. That way, That's why you have backups. It can happen at any time. The odds are pretty low of losing a film, but the, uh, they are still odd. Uh, I know they say a lot of us here uh, that love physical media and stuff, we're not really preserving film, and we're not. Okay, we're not. I mean, it's not the original master and everything. But uh, at least I have a physical copy of my favorites and I will watch over and I will protect them. And it doesn't sound like Hollywood is doing much in the way of watching over and protecting them. And they keep the, the, it's the typical Hollywood article there. It's like one hand, they'll tell you this bad news, like, oh, we're possibly losing this. And it's whispers and tones and it's happening. But then we have a bunch of other people that are so-called experts saying, no, 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 no. Everything is fine. There's no fire here. Everything's fine. We have AI. We have digital. We're watching it. We'll never lose all this. We got digital backups over digital backups over digital backups. Uh, but meanwhile, why make a story if everything is fine, right? So everything is clearly not fine. So uh, uh, my thoughts on this is, is if, if, as a physical media collector, find your physical media, collect it, uh, keep your backups of your DVDs, Blu-rays, 4Ks. If you want to digitize your file and keep the ISO, that's important as well. But uh, don't trust Hollywood. Uh, to keep a uh, watch on these things, it's happened before. And it looks like it's quietly happening again. Hopefully they'll fix it, but I don't have faith in Hollywood. I just, I don't. And it sucks to, uh, to hear about what's being lost for indie, indie filmmakers. Uh, but let me know what you guys think about all this in the comment section down below. What do you guys think about this? Do you think these digital decay files are being lost or is, are they trying to sugarcoat this? Uh, what do you think is being lost? Let me know all that in the comment section down below. And if you like what you saw here, maybe consider hitting that like button or subscribing and hitting that bell for notifications. That would be awesome if I earn your guys' subscriptions or possibly share the video out for everybody to see you join and become a channel member because that would help my channel immensely. Thank you and shout out to all my channel members. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you guys for being channel members here. And for all of your support and to everybody watching, whether you liked me, hated me, or liked this video, or hated this video, I thank you for sticking this along. Wherever y'all are, please have a great, safe, happy, healthy day, morning, afternoon, evening, and night. Always support physical media. It truly is the superior format. Godspeed.